Hello and welcome to Big Orbit Games unboxing video of the new Magic the Gathering Aether Revolt bundle. My name is Simon and I'll be doing the unboxing today. So what I'm going to do is open this up and show you what you get inside. Now bundles as of Kaladesh, so the set before this one, used to be known as Fat Packs but Wizards have officially changed the name and in the process they also changed the content slightly. So in case you're just catching up now from uh, Battle for Zendikar or elsewhere. So they now have 10 boosters in them rather than nine as before so you get slightly more boosters which is cool what you did lose out on was the um the cardboard deck boxes but a lot of people didn't like them because you couldn't put a sleeve deck in there so there's a couple of other changes though and i'll go through those as we have a look so let's take these two bits out from here so this underneath is just a cardboard spacer mostly it's just used to make sure the, you know, the packaging all stays together and it stays neat um but you can actually, originally, these were just bits of cardboard. But now they've actually made it into a lid. And you can actually use it as storage, which I quite like. Um, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what you'd want to put in there. Maybe just, you know, collections of dice. Maybe use it for your tokens or your lands or something. You know, it's not tall enough to put magic cards in. It's not wide enough. Uh, but you could lie cards down in there, potentially, or something. You know, I... I like that it is technically still usable. I think there's things you can do with it, and it's got the Planeswalker logo on there. So, you know, by all means, it's not terrible, seeing as it's it's already part of the packaging anyway. So, you know, it has another use, which is good. You also get uh, the Planeswalker guide in there and the fat pack itself. So we'll come to that in a moment. The bit I always like to show is if you were to open the inside of this, you'll see that there is a piece of artwork in there, which is quite cool. Sometimes they're vertical, sometimes they're horizontal. I think lately they've been horizontal rather than vertical. But yeah, you, so if you were to ever collect all of these, you can make yourself quite a nice little diorama with them all. And then on the back of this, you can see what the contents is. So you say, they said, we've got the player's guide, we've got the box, um, and we've got the storage and stuff, and I'll show you what else you're getting in here. Uh, so, well, first of all, actually, though, we will start with the player's guide. So this is a printout. You can see there's already holes in it. This is so that you can put it in a binder with your collection. So say you've got a, a nine-page binder folder, one of the proper, like, arch lever ones. You can use it to store it inside that, which is quite cool, I think. So what it does inside is explain some of the story. It highlights uh, cards, so the top ten cards there. But it just goes through what is happening in the story, what's happening with the key characters, like a Johnny there. And just tells you what is going on. Which, if you're really into the story of the set, this is where you can find the greater majority of it spout out. Uh, the website contains a lot of the other stories, though. So, Ether Revolt, so we're on to the actual cards. So, this is the meat of it, which is the cards. So, it shows you a visual guide to every card in the set in collector's number order. And I will just highlight one bit at the back, which is, and it tells you why here. So, there's 184 cards in the set. 100, cards number 185 plus are available exclusively in the Planeswalker decks. So, if you're ever uh, wondering why these numbers are slightly higher, if you have the Planeswalker decks, or if you're wondering where these come in the cycle, uh, it does explain it there for you. So yeah, take back the power. <laughs> so these are really nice little things to keep a hold of, especially when you've built up a little collection of them over playing multiple sets. Um, it's just really nice to have the player guides. So we're onto the actual box itself. So we're going to open this up and show you what you get inside. So predominantly you can see this lovely array of boosters. So nice seeing so many boosters isn't it? We then get inside a quick reference guide which is useful if you've just started playing Magic. It's a fold out you can keep next to you. It explains some of the very basic concepts of the game and also an anatomy of the turn. So if you forget sort of what comes next and what happens, boom, that's what it's for. Very useful if you're just learning to play magic. You also get this, which is a big wad of land. So you get a load of each land, uh, which is useful if you're just starting out in the game. If you've been playing for a while, you'll probably find you're usually swamped with basic lands. If you are, feel free to donate them to your local store or keep hold of them for doing things like drafting, stuff like uh, drafting, um, sealed events, maybe the next set's pre release. You know, they're cool for that sort of thing. Or you can use them to make decks, although you'll probably end up with a stage where you have so many basic lands and not enough decks you can make. But maybe. <laughs> and then you also get a spin down dice. 
So the number 20 is replaced with the set's symbol, so you can see there the ethereal volt symbol, and then it spins down, so 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, and so on and so forth, all the way down till we hit number 1. So these dice aren't very good for rolling, for randomizing, um, because of the fact that all the high numbers are at the top, so there's, um, they're just, and all the low numbers are at the bottom, they're not very good for rolling, for randomizing, but they're really cool for keeping track of your life. Very useful. And then inside, we have this little pull-out box. I think this is really cute and neat. This is really cool. You can put your deck inside that section, keep all your spares and other parts in this half. So when you're ready to play, you just go boom, and everything else can stay in there. It's such a nice little idea. I really like it. I just wanted to point out before I move away from the box as well. So you've got the box here. So these are always fairly solid cardboard, you know, they're always sturdy and well made. But what they change, they change this with Kaladesh, and I pointed this out in the Kaladesh video. And then as soon as I finished the video, I realised why it's done like this. So the boxes are cut in a strange way. You might think, you haven't put the lid on properly. No, that is shut. That is how these boxes are done now. The new bundles, they have this section cut off. I was thinking, you know, this is really weird. It's like an angle cut. Why why would they do that sort of cut? It's a bit weird. And then I realised, when you pick it up, if you were to pick it up by the lid before, there was the chance of it falling out. However, now that they've got the lid cut, you can actually grab it by the bottom. No chance of you dropping it because you're only holding the lid. It's a really simple thing. It sounds a bit awkward to explain. You'd have to actually have one in front of you to understand. But normally with a fat pack, you just grab them. And as you grab it, I, you can, you can, especially when it's some weight in it, this just drops off. However, now you can grab it by the bottom to stop it falling out. It's genius. Such a simple little design choice. It's genius. I love it. So there we go. So that's, <laughs> in case you're ever wondering, that's why there's an angle cut into it. So, we have 10 boosters here. I think it'd be remiss of me not to open them, don't you? I'm not gonna go through everything in the pack. Um, I've done a booster box opening, so if you'd like to see me open 36 packs and go through some of the cards we get in there, well, that is where you wanna go. Oh yes, consulate crackdown. And what I really like about these cards that they've started doing, because I'm more of a Vorthos, which means I'm more into the story of the game, Story Spotlight 1 of 5, so this is, I really like this, I really like that they've sort of said, look, these are the key cards, these really help explain the story, go check them out. So, like I said, I'm going to flick through, oh, we got a Tezzeret, oh, beautiful. He may not be the most beloved and most liked Planeswalker, but I really like his story, I think Tezzeret's a really interesting character, so. I'm very happy that I pulled a tether from that. Uh, let's keep flicking through. We have a Scrap Trawler, who's definitely making his way into my Artifact Commander deck, because he allows you to get artifacts back from the graveyard. I wonder how useful is that ability. Um, and I'm just flicking straight through basically to the rares. Walking Ballista is another one that I like, because I like the idea of him throwing bits of himself at people. Read the cards, trust me. <laughs> I get the you know, suggestion that he throws parts of himself at people. Um, ah, Kari Zev, which is one of the, the cycle of legendary people. Um, I say this is... Um, the reason I'm just flicking through to the rares is just because it's... Look how many cards are in, in, the, in each one. You know, if I sat and went through... Ooh! If I sat and went through, sorry, sat and went through each one, then you know we'd be here for hours, so... Life Crest is best here in a hinterland drake in foil. It's always nice to pull foil cards. But yeah, if I sat and went through every single card with the here forever, so what I generally want to do is just open up the cards and just have a look and see, you know, which which big shiny rares we're getting because they're the really show. Oh, we've got Carrie's expertise. Oh, and a fatal push in foil. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and just get the gist of all the big stuff that we're getting. So, not only did we get Carrie Zev, we got her expertise as well. So, the cycle, so there's one in each colour legendary creature, 
Sorry, Kev be, uh, carries Zev being one of them, the red one. But there's also a cycle of expertise cards, so each one got a card called their name expertise, so carry Zev's expertise. Um, which is quite cool, and they work with them. All of them have an ability that fits with that character, and then they also have a, you may cast a card with X or less converted mana cost from your hand, so in this case two, so enough to be able to play carry Zev herself. And the reason I'm holding Fatal Push is this is, even though it's only uncommon, I think in standard this is going to be a highly sought after card, and the fact we've got it in foil is very pretty. So, um, it's a nice spell that helps you kill your opponent's creatures, which is mean, I agree, but very useful. So we have Exquisite Archangel, so that's two Mythic Rats. So every set of magic, pretty much, bar one or two in its history, always have an, at least one angel and one demon of some kind in there. Because, you know, it's magic, it's fantasy, you always have to have angels and demons. Uh, Exquisite Archangel is this set's angel, uh, which is a seven mana 5-5 five, five flyer, and if you'd lose the game, you instead exile her, and your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. So it basically resets your life for you. Very nice. Um, oh, Yeheni's expertise. Oh, we got Sari uh, carries heaven foil. <laughs> That's really cool. So we got a foil rare of the card. Uh, Yeheni is the black character. Um, so the black's legendary creature. Um, and its abilities, all creatures get minus three, minus three, which is a very black ability. And then finally, we have Quicksmith Spy, who uh, allows, uh, grants a artifact the ability to be a draw engine, which is good for some of the cheap little... Oh, pardon me. So yeah, overall, I'm very happy with what I got in my uh, bundle. <laughs> so, carry Zev in foil and a normal version. So if you're going to put them in a deck, well, we're sorted, aren't we? We've got her expertise, we've got her herself, and we've got her in foil. Pretty nice. We've got quite a few artifacts there, but it is an artifact-focused set. We've got the Concerts Crackdown, uh, which is one of the story-focused cards. And then Mythics. We have the Exquisite Archangel and Tezra at the Schema. Two Mythics from a bundle is really good. Uh, you usually hope to at least get one, to be able to get two, and to get a foil rare. Mwah. Beautiful boosters. And I hope if you've bought a bundle you get the same luck as I did just there. So yeah, so these are only ever available on release of a set. Um, after release, they're no more get made. So if you ever find them, they're really cool, nice collector's piece to have because the boxes are really good for storage. Um, you get loads of boosters in there. This is a really nice thing to have is the bundles. The player's guides are nice, you know, keep a nice pile of them. You can always reference them. They're good for reading through the story, etc. Yeah, I, I always recommend players get bundles, especially if you're starting out. Very cool to have. So yeah, there we go. That is everything that I've had in my bundle. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Feel free to check out my other Ether Revolt unboxings as well. Uh, remember, all the cards you've seen here today can be bought and sold as individual cards on our website, bigorwickcards.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And, um, well, I hope you've enjoyed watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.